Wow, almost a full house. Huh? Cool. Uh, thanks for coming out and hearing from us. Uh, thanks for being in this place and spending your Wednesday evening with us. Uh, I think if I could categorize uh, all of you here, I would categorize you into three categories. Uh, one, you have been users of MHUB, right? You have been uh, in the banks, uh, property developers, real estate agents, lawyers, part of the ecosystem. You've been using us for the past uh, two years, three years, and uh, you know about us and you know we are good, right? And that's why when you heard about this opportunity to invest, you came, right? So that's good. So uh, thank you. I would say to you, don't miss this opportunity. I would, I would, I would say to you, you've already used this, so you already know the potential of MHUB. So uh, kudos to you for that first category of people. Uh, second category of people, probably you are people who are uh, just, uh, just looking at the industry and looking at tech, looking at property and looking for opportunities to invest. And probably you got an email from, I don't know, either Radar or Pitchin or one of the other ways and you are just curious, right? You're just curious, you're here to hear what we have to say, to hear what the offer is, and uh, you're just here to explore. And again, please, I hope uh, today's session has been uh, informative so far and will be even more exciting and informative as we go along, uh, talk about the offer. And probably the third category of people probably are honestly the, our competitors. Lah. <laughs> people who are, ah, this is an open event, ah, anyone can come, so it's very interesting. Uh, you, you come and they just say, oh, what's MHUB up to now? Uh, I don't go into too much details or stories, but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it, being in this space and growing to the point that we have, sometimes we get uh, interesting uh, encounters and interesting situations. All I want to say is maybe to keep it simple, to tell you so, I would say to you that our secret sauce uh, and what makes us uh, who we are really is in our tagline, right? Which is the people-powered property platform, right? Meaning the talents that's in the, in the, in the MHUB, the team, you know, all everyone outside that you met along the way, people on that video, 100% uh, or if it's all MHUB uh, stuff. We didn't hire any talents or anyone like, anything like that. So I'm very proud of them. I'm very proud that you know, all around sitting, standing here just doing, we, didn't, we don't have to hire any external people. We just got our... <laughs> Austin's a coder, you know. He's a coder. Now he's looking after the door. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Yeah, just uh, maybe round of applause for the team. Uh, people Power Property Platform, yeah. All right. Cool. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right. I'm going to talk about the power of platforms. Something interesting is happening. Google it. Seriously, Google it now. Search for this phrase, something interesting is happening. Please, please, I, 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 I open it. I, I invite you to take your phone, open up Google and search this phrase, something interesting is happening. I'll give you half a minute. You got it? All right. Very likely, okay, I, I hope uh, it's still there, but very likely you will get this page. Sorry. This page, right? Right? How many of you have seen this, this uh, picture before? Show of hands. Quick show of hands, come on. Uh, give them up, give, don't be shy. Uh, I hope by now the ice has been broken. Okay, good. So some of you still, need, still new to this. Let me zoom into one of these pages, huh? one of these uh, images. One of these images. Right. Uber. The world's largest taxi company owns no vehicle. True or not, right? In Malaysia, equivalent would be Grab, right? Facebook, the world's most popular media owner creates no content, right? I think some of you are on Facebook now. Please come back here. Don't, don't go on Facebook. <laughs> Unless you're talking about MHUB, then please be on Facebook and hashtag MHUB, all right? Thirdly, Alibaba, the world's most valuable retailer has no inventory. Hmm, there's a pattern going on here. Fourthly, Airbnb, the world's largest accommodation provider, owns no real estate. Right? MHUB. <laughs> Fill in the blanks. <laughs> I would say MHUB is the world's large, I mean, not yet. <laughs> Malaysia, we're leading our aspiration. Leading, leading for sure. Okay, transaction company. We do not, we are not a bank and we are not a property developer but we transact properties on MHUB. And that's a very exciting place to be. I'll go back one slide, okay. So I coined this phrase, visionaries see common sense before it's common. And we get that. I mean, not everyone sees the same things. Not everyone uh, is exposed to the same things or has the same experience, right? But some people will see common sense. They'll say, hey, this makes sense. Why is it not yet happening? Right? And, and I believe that like, even the speakers just now, I just want to say thank you to Leroy, uh, to, to uh, David, 
to, to Kenny for even sharing. And the way they say it's so common sense. Right? It's, it's only a matter of fact. It's only a matter of time, right? And it's only a matter of who. So, visionaries see common sense before it's common. So, even in this room, I get it. Not everyone will get it right away, right? But for those who do, I hope that you would see it and take action today, right? Because in five years' time, I don't want you to be in five years' time, oh yeah, I came to this investor preview from MHub. Uh, yeah, I, was, I had the opportunity. Ah, uh, yeah, but then I did not invest. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I saw it, but then uh, yeah, don't be the one that missed out, right? Okay, I just need a bit of uh, angling, right? So, what is the common thread between these four uh, this, this, the, the apps that I mentioned earlier, Uber, Airbnb, Alibaba, Facebook, they are all platforms, right? These businesses don't directly create or control inventory via a supply chain the way linear businesses do, right? Platform business don't own the means of production. Instead, they create a means of connection, right? We are a platform. We don't own properties. We don't give out loans, but we provide a means to connect, right? A platform is a business model that creates value by facilitating exchange between two or more interdependent groups, right? On our platform, we have different types of people. We have the bankers, we've got the buyers, we've got the real estate agents, we've got the lawyers, and the value happens in the connection that hap that, that, that's made on the platform. Usually, the consumers produce. Okay, Pl platform harness and creates large scalable networks of users and resource that can, can, that can be accessed on demand, right? Platforms create the communities and markets which network effect that allows users to interact and transact, right? And this whole thing about network, network effects is interesting because the more uh, real estate agents there is, the more valuable it is for property developers. And the more property uh, uh, projects there are on the platform, the more valuable it is for banks. And it's, it's all interrelated. And there's a harmonious uh, flow of how transaction happens, right? So, just to paint a, a context on how platforms are different from everything else, okay? How platform is different compared to other kinds of techs, right? If you're talking about a software company, okay? Traditionally, okay, you, when, software companies like you make one app and you sell it over and over again. So these are like your Microsoft, your Adobe, your Angry Bird, right? Your Candy Crush, right? They make the game one time and then they sell the game over and over again in the App Store and, and, and whatnot, okay? Software, they sell the same thing over and over again. If you're talking about a service provider, all right, hire one, sell one, meaning you pay per use, pay per, I mean per service, like you hire on your cow team or your or fi Fiverr or your whatever it is, you get someone to come on board and then you pay them per service. So it's a very transactional, one-time, one-time only kind of a transaction. And if you're talking about product companies, this is the more traditional one where you create an item and then you sell one. You make one, you sell one. You take your order online, you make one, you sell one. So it's very straightforward. This is very easy to understand. But platforms is very exciting. Because platform is a means for many to make and many to sell. I hope you can tell the difference from this chart. Right? 60% of today's billion dollar unicorn startups are platform businesses. 60%. Right? In Asia alone, 31 of the 36 unicorns are platforms. In China, 81% of the 21 unicorns are platforms. And in India, eight out of nine unicorns are platforms, right? This is what's happening regionally. This is what's happening around the world. Malaysia, I believe, really, it's just a matter of time, okay? It's not a matter of will it happen. I think I'm pretty sure you also know that tech is, is changing the way we interact. Tech is changing the way we consume media, the way we connect, make connections, we build relationships, we are entertained. It's... It's, it's just the way it's going to be, right? And platforms definitely is a very big part of that. Okay, let's go back, take one step back and look to the US. Uh, Kenny and David talked about the Malaysian scenario. Let's talk about in the US, right? Modernizing the real estate, okay? The prop tech opportunity. In the US alone, 3.5 trillion real, is the contribution of a real estate contribution to the US GDP. You know? In construction, 836 billion. Uh, sales per year in US for existing homes is 1.3 trillion, right? Not even billion, okay? And US residents' brokerage commissions per year is 66 billion, right? It's a mouthful. <laughs> I'm getting thirsty just saying it. Which brings us to MHub, right? We are a platform that creates 
and gives opportunity for transaction, right? So we bring together developers, real estate agents, bankers, buyers, and lawyers in one platform where they can, everyone can be connect, can connect in a meaningful way, can uh, transact, can uh, uh, do their jobs easier, right? Uh, if, if you've been in the industry and you know how tedious it can sometimes get you, to do your own job is sometimes a challenge because you have to do all the other menial stuff, right? You don't make meaningful connections, you do all kinds of other things before you actually even get to do your actual, actual job that you're paid for, all right? And, and, and really, the, the, the big factor in what we're doing is we, we actually speed up, simplify, and save costs, right? Time is money. The longer it takes for property to be sold, you're talking about opportunity costs, you're talking about uh, marketing costs, you're talking about maintenance costs, and there's all, all kinds of costs. But with MHUB, we speed up, we simplify, we save costs. Okay, let's look at prop tech, right? If you're, talking, if you're looking at the US, uh, I mean, looking around the world, these are the early prop techs, right? Autodesk, Coastal Group, Argus. These are before, uh, in the 1980s and 2000s, this is where it all began, right? And then we move on very quickly. Prop tech 1.0 are, like what David said earlier, aggregators. Your Zillow's, your Trulia, your Appfolio, your Redfin in, in Malaysia, your Property Guru, your iProperty, and all these listing portals, right? Okay? Sorry. And 2.0. We're talking about your uh, co-working space like WeWork, Airbnb, Open Doors, and Purple Bricks. These are the, the trends that's hap that was happening in the US from the 90, uh, 2008 to, to now, right? But what we're looking at, PropTech 3.0, is full-on transactions from beginning to end, right? And it involves owners, brokers, tenants, institutional in investors, everyone, okay? No longer just one aspect of it, which is just listing or just a uh, 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 co-working space, but it marries together and integrates together every single aspect of it. And that's what is required for the market to really fix it, to really fix things. Because the problem is we cannot just fix one part of it and expect things to work. It is actually a systemic thing that we need to look at. And that's why when we first started, honestly, I didn't expect to, to build five, seven apps. <laughs> I thought it was going to be just one app. But then the, the more we look at it, the more we understand the, the system and the more we hear from our users, there's no choice. We have to do it this way. Okay, closer to home. The top 12 fintech startups in Malaysia, you can see, uh, we're proud to say that we are there. MHUB is there. It's okay to cheer a bit, Ken. You can clap a bit <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> All right. And also glad to say our, our the ECF platform, Pichin, is there as well. A shout out to them. Yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> we will hear more from uh, Cash later on about uh, Pichin. So, yeah, uh, we are considered, maybe we were in this, in this article uh, listed as the 12 other startup fintech in Malaysia. Okay. What, coming back to platform, what is it that is required for platform to work? All right. And these are four core components. I'm going to speak through it because of time. Number one, tools and services. Number two, audience building. Number three, rules and standards. And number four, matchmaking. And what is, does this all mean? Right. Tools and services. When you're talking about um, a platform, you've got to have tools that works. I mean, and in our case, they are the apps that we give to our uh, users, different users. To our real estate agents, we give tools to sell. To our property developers, we give the operating system to list the, the, the inventory. To our bankers, we give a, a means to get warm leads uh, and, and update the loan status. To the lawyers, we give them tools to do the signing, okay? These are many, many things. So tools are just tools. These are just the app, the technology behind it. There's no point having the platform, but not no one using it. And I'm glad to say that we have, in the, in, in, since we started in 2015 uh, and, and grown and grown and grown, we have, uh, get, we have gotten some strong traction, right? We have 4,000 users. There are 200 over projects listed. We have 200 over agencies. And we have 20 over banks receiving leads, right? So traction is there. Audience building is important, okay? It's growing. Right, these are some of the uh, users that have uh, developers, prominent developers that have come onto our system. And uh, it's very interesting also because when we first, first started, they were like, oh, who's M up? Uh, what, what are you guys doing? You know? And then they were telling us, they're treating us like a solution provider, like build this, build this, build that. But as we journey along with them and they, were they could see our sincerity and our, our um, really our, our desire to problem solve and to fix things for them, uh, eventually it came to a point where they came to us and asked, how should we do it on M hub? Uh, should we do it this way or this way? Because we, we hear from different developers, we know the best practice in the market and we improve things, all right? All right. 
rules and standards. Okay, so rules and standards we're talking about here is uh, the tech can do it, but should it work this way? Even though technology can support it, should it be done that way? Okay, for example, maybe your Grab. Uh, you, you, you turn your Grab and you're looking for a, a driver, all right? You have to wait a certain minute. You need to key in certain things. These are rules and standards which you have to follow, adhere to for things to happen. Like say you're talking about your, your Lazada, you have, to, you have to key in your credit card, you have to key in your, your details or whatever it is. These are things that is required to make the transaction happen. And it's rules and standards which we have to come up on the platform to make things uh, work smoothly. And it's not easy, okay? It may seem like very common practice now, but th there is a time of uh, transitioning and coming up with it and teething process, right? And finally, matchmaking, right? So these are a few components of, uh, of matchmaking. It's actually making, it's not just about putting things out there and like say, again, going back to the property listing, oh, I search this one and then I get the thing here. It's not a search portal, right? The, the connection that we make has to be meaningful, right? It has to be meaningful connections, okay? And later on, uh, we're excited to, when my partner will share on, on our buyer app where we can actually uh, facilitate that and give you the tools for that. Right? So if you saw our video <laughs> early on, uh, lead is one thing that we have. Going through it real quickly, lead is a tool that we use to get our leads. Right? We don't grow, we don't, we don't uh, um, um, create leads, but we nurture leads. Right? We have tools for that. And from the lead part, we sell. Okay, showroom is used by property developers and real estate agents. Right? Uh, what it has is real-time listing, uh, real-time inventory. Uh, what buyers can do is actually see how a unit is laid out and actually make payments online, right? That's what lead is, just in a nutshell. All this you can find online, yeah, in our videos, but just a good, good thing. Buyer is very, the exciting thing that is not yet launched, but it's going to happen very, very soon, is where you, as a buyer, can know your credit score within minutes, right? Because we work with Secrets, CITOS, we, we, do, uh, we have KYC, uh, we work with Tongdun, um, which we'll invite in a bit, and then we can actually know uh, from that, their score and, uh, and, the, and the credit worthiness, the banks will then be able to match in a, in a, in a, in a way that's meaningful, right? <laughs> they ask their permission to use that picture. Okay, and the bankers, okay, you can see how happy they are. <laughs> they get warm leads, right? So for banks, it's, very, it's a no-brainer, okay? Uh, property, because what's, what's happening in the market right now is bankers, they get leads, but they don't, it's not necessarily warm. It's, it's, it's what they, uh, one banker told me is, is crap leads. Like, okay, okay, uh, uh, apologize for the crudeness, but I say leads that does not convert. But because we have the tools to quantify, to qualify the buyers, the leads are already tied to bookings, right? And that's why bankers, when they get the lead from MHUB, they know that, hey, uh, these are warm leads. And the dynamics of things have changed because once a banker gets a lead from MHUB, they also know that banker number two, banker number three also gets a lead. So the sense of competitiveness kicks in. Right? And a lawyer app, okay? Because again, this was built because of a demand uh, request from developers and they said, this is a real pain point. Uh, everything is done, but then we are stuck with the lawyers. <laughs> and the lawyers will say, not to say they can't do their job, but because the, there's not enough tools there to facilitate communication, to make arrangements, to schedule for things. So we have a lawyer app. So it's all inclusive. And all of this is done uh, with the purview of the, the showroom HQ, which is developers can see end to end to end. So they know. Uh, they have an operating system to see how sales is doing. They can see this, this particular project, which uh, unit is doing well and which banker, which uh, agent and all that. So it's all very clear and they can make a data-driven decision. Right. So, let me conclude my presentation with this point. Something interesting is happening. Don't just Google it. Be a part of it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>